。感謝主，我哋再有一次能夠一齊嚟到分享主嘅話。We thank the Lord. We have the opportunity to share the Word of God once again. 今日係第四次啊，藉著以科所書同大家交通到神永遠的旨意。This is the fourth occasion that I'm sharing from the book of Ephesians regarding the eternal will of God. God is the God of from eternity to eternity. So His will on us, whether yesterday, today, or forever, will not change. 所以神永遠嘅旨意唔係人認為頭腦上一啲嘅知識。So God's will is not just some knowledge in man's mind。係神喺我哋每個人身上今日要嘅，要要實行嘅。It is what God intends to bring about and do today。或者佢。Or we can say it is in this generation the work that he intends to do. We know we are the workmanship of God in Christ. We know how we have been created in the image of God Himself. 所以我哋嘅被造，我哋嘅被拯救，就系、是、为咗神嘅旨意，能够喺我哋身上通行出嚟。So God's creation of us and also with our salvation is for His will to be accomplished through us。所以我哋呢一班人，无论我哋喺世界上得到乜嘢嘅东西。No matter what we have gotten in this world, ah, 或者我哋有乜嘢成就、物质、学问、地位、名誉有几高 ？No matter how much we have accomplished, how much we have gotten in this world, or how high our status is, 我话俾你听，你唔会真正有满足。Let me tell you, you will never have real satisfaction because you are just man. Because God tells us that we have been created, man has been created for His glory. So in our lives, we have to make sure that we are working for God's glory. When God's will and glory can come through by us, 让神能够喺我哋嘅身上真系作主作王，彰显出嚟嘅时候。And when God can be King and Lord in our lives, being revealed, 我哋先至能够真正有平安、有喜乐、有满足。Only then will we come to have true satisfaction, a joy. We have said that God's will is in His heart. We have said that God's will is in His heart. We have said that God's will is in His heart. We have said that God's will is in His heart. We have said that God's will is in His heart. We have said that God's will is in His heart. We have said that God's will is in His heart. We have said that God's will is in His heart. We have said that God's will is in His heart. We have said that God's will is in His heart. We have said that God's will is in His heart. We have said that God's will is in His heart. We can say then, Christ is the very content of the will of God. God wants His Son to be above all, all in all. And God's will is to be brought through with Christ being one who is bring everything together. So God's will in His Son. There is also in this will another will, and that is the church. 神嘅奥秘就系基督
So in God's word, we are told the mystery of God is Christ, and the mystery of Christ is the church. And God wants for His Son to have indeed a a bride on earth. And though God would save each and every individual of us, but we are being brought together as a body. The moment we come to believe, God indeed baptizes us into one body. And for us to come together, do you think it is just a coincidence? In fact, God has, before the world's foundation, have chosen us in Christ. And that's why at the end of chapter 1, it says in the assembly of the church is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And the end of chapter 2 tells us that we are being built, uh, fitted together, increased into the holy temple for the habitation of God. And end of chapter 3 tells us how, through the church, he is to be glorified uh, in Christ Jesus unto all generations. When we talk about the will of God, we are referring to today how God intends to obtain the church for his Christ. If we have Christ as the head and we being linked up together as fellow members uh, being that one body, when we gradually mature into the full stature, when we have the full measure of his stature, the Lord Jesus will return. Then God's will at that very moment will be able to be on, be on earth as it is in heaven. And today, for all our service, our pursuit, and in our preaching of the gospel, is for this very purpose. And it is in this uh, direction. This is indeed a great matter. This is a spiritual mystery. However, it is uh, through us being all linked up together in Christ in order for this to be brought through and fulfilled. And in the process, we are to reveal the one testimony. And 
And simply, it means that He is the head and we the body. And the oneness or that one is Christ is all and we are nil, we are zero. And for Him to be the Lord and He is the head. And the few minutes I've spent in saying all this are, are, in fact, what I have shared in the first three sessions. And I hope that you have an impression of this. May the will of God lay hold of us. And uh, totally taking hold of us. Then we can truly be those who are called of God, who are willing to uh, satisfy His heart. If this is how we live and how we serve, only then will we arrive at the will and purpose of God's creation, creating of us. Only then will we have this thought of uh, peace and satisfaction in us. And our lives will then uh, grow. I believe I've shared with you all that how uh, Brother uh, Wong his uh, influence on me has been rather great. I have, uh, in fact, uh, li- uh, have a life uh, sharing with him uh, in our pursuing and uh, service for 48 years. And he has been such a great help and there's no time to uh, tell all. I can't remember whether I've told you about this the very last time when I met up with him. And how he led me to see the real uh, peace, uh, joy, and, and uh, satisfaction, and the having no want. And uh, it was my last impression of what I saw of him when uh, Raymond uh, uh, took him uh, back to his bed uh, after sharing f- with us for an hour. How he then says, thank you, uh, thank you, with a, a smile. And that's what I have the last impression of him. And 
This is the picture of one's life having come through uh, to uh, being fulfilling the, uh, his purpose. How there's this uh, thankfulness, um, the happiness, the joy, uh, and uh, the need of having and uh, not need of having anything. And in living in the will of God, this is where God wants us to end up with. I'd like to share with brothers and sisters at the latter part of chapter 4 of Ephesians. And if God willing, then I'll continue my sharing on through in chapter 5 to verse uh, to chapter 6, verse 9. And this is uh, to do uh, with uh, God, fulfilling God's will in a practical uh, way. We know of God's eternal purpose. We can see that the church being built up and God's will. We know what God wants to do and how God will do it. We know a great deal of very precious, precious uh, uh, spiritual uh, teachings. We know how in the body and also uh, the work of the cross, uh, we know all this uh, clearly enough. We know uh, the individuals uh, uh, learning uh, cannot be uh, in any way uh, neglected or missed. Uh, and uh, could our sister read for us uh, chapter 4, Ephesians, uh, chapter 4, verse 17 through to verse 30? I will not read it. Ephesians 4, verse 17. So I will show, Tia Zuli, Trish, the show, Limen Sing Shibra, Tai Sang Wai Baron, Chun Chu on the Sing Sing Shi, Limen Sing Di Hun Mei, Yu Shen So, Tsu the Shung Ming Ke Jula, Doing to the Wu Zhi, Sing Li Gang Ning. Liman 个人与灵舍说实话等候得数的日子来到。If we only have our individual spiritual pursuit, it seems that we cannot enter into the abundance of the Spirit. 
矫枉过正，唔好以为你知道咗神永远嘅旨意，你就得噶啦。Also, at the same time, we cannot assume that the moment we come to know of the will of God, eternal will, then that's it. And to know of the building up, the truth about the building up of the church, then that's it. Do you really then have the true basic learning of the church? And the learning and dealing of the self, no one, not an individual, should miss out or neglect. 反而你越系睇到神嘅心意，个人。The moment you see the will of God, then the requirement on you is indeed very high. And when we read、uh, this passage from verse seventeen in the Sims letter here, this is the style or trend of the world living. But we know the、uh, eternal will of God, such high things.、Uh, why are you telling us these things again? 但你嗰度的确系对我哋讲嘅，所以我哋所说嘅说实的说，你们行事唔要再像外邦人存虚妄的心，心地昏暗，与神所赐的生命隔绝，都因自己无知，良心丧重，放纵私欲，贪行种种嘅污秽。啊，呢啲讲到好似好好污糟邋遢嘅嗰啲生活。And it mentioned of things how the nations walk in in the vanity of their minds, being darkened, estranged from the life of God, reason of hardness of their heart. All these things which are so、uh, filthy and not right. That is to say that we may well be in such a state. So you don't think that you are too young to be in such a state. So you don't think that you are too young to be in such a state. So you don't think that you are too young to be in such a state. So you don't think that you are too young to be in such a state. So you don't think that you are too young to be in such a state. So you don't think that you are too young to be in such a state. If we are not alert、uh, and aware in the Lord, then we can be in such a state without even realizing. At that state, we ourselves do not know. Many times, we are so confused by God's life and life, that we are so blind to the light of His light. We do not know that we are in that state as one being in darkness, darkened in an understanding, estranged from the life of God by reason of ignorance and hardness of heart. And this is a very clear reminder. So, in the twenty-third verse, the twenty-third verse says, "They have learned to know God, but they are not like others." So in verse twenty, they are told this is not what they learned of Christ. 
And in verse 20 and 21, it says that they have heard of Christ, they have learned of Him, uh, they have been instructed in Him according to the truth and also uh, according uh, to the holiness. We have the experience, not just merely the teachings now. How we need them to put off the old man and to put on the new man. We know we are those who have already received life. And we have learned the word of God, having experienced the truth and the way. We have this new life. But in our very, very life, have we put off the old man? These words are really good reminders for us. How do we put off the old man? Friends, sisters, it's very difficult for us to put off our old man. There is only one way of doing this. It is the cross that will do away the right of the old man. And we know that uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 talks about how the circumcision that we have is not one that is made by hands, but the one that is done through the Spirit. And Romans chapter 6, uh, verse 3, talks about our being baptized into the death of Christ. And this uh, is that we have been baptized unto his death and also been raised together alive with him into a newness of life. And this is the very uh, work of uh, God. We have also made such a testimony and a witness that we have been dead with Christ, buried with him and raised up with him. And they tells us that knowing this, that our old man has been crucified with him, that the body of sin might be annulled, that we should no longer serve sin, for he that has died is justified from sin. This speaks of the work of the cross. The Lord has been crucified for us on the cross. And when he was crucified on the cross, the Lord has already uh, taken us with him. Do we accept the work of the cross in our lives? Are we willing to deny ourselves, to put to death the old man and to put on the new man? Uh, 
We are not saying one thing and doing another. When we hear of the will of God, we are willing to satisfy His heart. He says we have the heart to love the Lord. Then we cannot avoid the very work of the cross in our lives. If you really love the Lord, and in John's Gospel, chapter 14, the Lord says that uh, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, and if you so do, I, the Father will love you uh, and I will uh, come uh, to you. And the words of God is clear that we should not live like the Gentiles. How we have died with Him, buried with Him, and raised with Him. We know what it is that God is after, what His heart is uh, wanting. We have the very life of God in us. And the Holy Spirit lives in us. Just now in chapter 4, Ephesians, verse 30, a very important verse. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. And to put off the old man and to put on the new man is a very a principle of our lives and living. It is not observing and keeping the law. So as not to do something. And what it is that we should not do is to grieve the Holy Spirit of God that is in us. And in verse 18, it speaks of the hardness of their hearts. And here it's the same, that we should not harden our hearts towards the Holy Spirit. Then you will not be estranged from the life of God and being darkened in your understanding. Francis, I'm sure that every one of us go through experiences each day. And when you are with brothers and sisters living together or, or being together, uh, you may find that the flesh comes through and you may be speaking a word or two out of it. And at home, whether uh, with your wives or husband or your children, and when there is a disagreement, suddenly there is this anger that comes forth and you start to say uh, things that you should not have said. Then, this is the case, how you are being estranged from the life of God. Why? It's because there is this darkness in your heart. And 
And your heart has been hardened towards the Holy Spirit. You are no longer sensitive to Him or take heed to His、uh, urging. Verse twenty-seven says, "Give no room for the devil." And verse twenty-five says, "Put off falsehood." And the devil is indeed the father of lies. In Revelation, when it mentions of the overcomers, how are they being described? It says that there is no falsehood in their mouth. On one hand,、uh, before God, we should have a heart that is sensitive and tender. Don't harden your heart towards God, and do not harden your hearts towards the Holy Spirit. But to the devil, we should not give him any room. Verse twenty six says, "Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun set upon your anger. Do not、uh, stop、uh, fellowship with the Lord." And if when you are in anger, when you are angry, will you be in communion with the Lord? And if you let the sun set on your anger, is it not long enough? God's word tells you. The Lord is telling us that it is enough. That if you are having any fellowship with the Lord, you will not be angry. You will not have lost your temper. And says,、uh, "Do not、uh, steal anymore.、Uh, do not uh, uh, speak corruptly, and so on." Don't be、uh, those who will satisfy your own lust. 嘅嘢，我哋要唔好做呢啲嘢，不要。即係呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到就係，呢啲都說到These are all the negative side、uh, aspect, but when you go into chapter five, you, it shows us what the positive living in the spirit is. And this is a positive aside. Be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love, even as Christ has loved us. How we are beloved children and in the love of God, how we can be imitators of Him. 自己睇嚟睇去，睇個樣都係一個亞當嘅樣。Uh, you may well think, oh, I've been trying to imitate, and I, I try and I try, and but still, all I see of myself is like I'm like Adam. 呢度講俾你聽啊，好像蒙愛嘅神嘅兒女一樣
But here we are told, as beloved children. Do you feel that God's love is in you? Without the love of God in you, it's not possible for you to love God or brothers and sisters. Then we can, in no way, be imitators of God in our lives. And where is uh, the uh, secret? First John chapter two verse fifteen tells us. It says, "Love not the world, nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him." When the life of love is very much in us, and there will be this love where we will love our God and our Lord. Then we can be as beloved children walking worthy of our God. And how in verse 9 it says that then for the fruit of the light and all goodness and righteousness of truth. And there is this desire for you to be agreeable to the Lord. Verse 17 tells us, For this reason, be not foolish, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And verse 15, we are to be wise. Verse 20, telling us that at all times to give the things uh, thanks to the Lord. These are real learning for each uh, individual, each uh, person. For those who want to live out the will of God, how we need to be trained uh, in these things and to exercise these things. To know the will of God, this will of God is singular. What is agreeable to God, it is what He wants and it is His will. It is not just that God's will is so great and so high and it's so uh, extraordinary. In fact, in our lives, uh, every small detail uh, can be linked up and should be linked up to the will of God. God's heart is for Christ to be uh, uh, above all. Uh, 
God's heart is for everything to be united in Christ. Something may well be、uh, in our own personal life. We ask, oh, this is a sister prepared by God, or is this、uh, brother prepared by God? If all we look at is that, oh, how、uh, he is so.、Uh, A tender and gentle, how handsome he is, and how he has achieved a, a many things. If these are things that we look for, then for this brother or sister, would you be able to be of one heart and mind with、uh, this person? To exalt the Lord. We do make a decision. 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 We do make That the decision that you have made is able to link up with the will of God. How we need to do that which is pleasing to the Lord. And if we live in the light of the will of God, then we will be able to please the Lord, and at the same time, live out very much the will, His will. It may seem that these are very personal, individual learning. But this is most fundamental that basically every one of us should have. We need to pay the cost to pursue. How we need to walk carefully as not as unwise but wise. We need to redeem the time because the days are evil. And these words are ever meant to remind us, but it's not just for our living. It is for us to be able to link up with the will of God and thereby be pleasing to Him. Verse twenty tells us, giving thanks at all times for all things to Him who is God and the Father. And this is everything, all things. And in the name of the Lord means for Him to be the Lord, and in this、uh, context, it is to be in the will of God. Ever having a thankful heart that is in the Lord. Verse twenty-one, I find it to be very important. Twenty-one, I find it to be very important. 
五章二十二至一直去到六章九节嘅一个原则。And this verse twenty-one is a summary of all the verses from verse twenty-two onwards. 又当全敬畏基督的心，彼此顺服。How we are to submit ourselves to one another in the fear of Christ. 当以弗所书讲咗神永远嘅旨意，讲咗神嘅计划之后。When Ephesians、uh, display clearly for us、uh, God's will and God's heart, here、uh, three、uh, relationships、uh, of man、uh, is being、uh, brought out. This is not just to help us to be good parents. 屋企誒爸爸媽媽同兒女誒和諧，你做工啊誒都能夠誒誒誒順順利利誒得老闆嘅誒歡歡心更簡單。Yeah, it's not just for husbands and wives、uh, to have a, a good relationship, or for the children、uh, to be in harmony with the parents, or to be at work、uh, well、uh, recognized. Uh, 可以得到呃、uh, 老板的赏识，不是只不是只是这些东西。呢啲都系一个过程。These are all a process. 目的系叫我哋实际嘅。The purpose is that we can truly learn of the lessons in life. 都能够认识基督系元首，同埋我哋活喺佢嘅主权下边，系一个重要。And to recognize in all these situations that Christ is the one who is above all, and how we are to be under His authority. 基本宿命、生命、这些都是基本属于生命上面的。Actual, true, spiritual learnings， 而且这个是包括所有的。妻子同埋丈夫，系讲到人与人当中最亲密嘅关系。呃，妻子。Husband and wife speaks of the most intimate relationship of man。儿女同埋父母咧，特别系讲到儿女啊，系每一个人嘅地位。每個人細，每個人都有咁嘅經歷嘅，都做人兒女嘅。誒、uh, ，做人兒女。Children and parents, especially for children, how every one of us、uh, would have such a status. 僕人同埋主人或者上司同埋下屬咧，亦都係我哋差唔多花最多時間嘅誒呢個一個關係裏邊。Uh, and uh, for masters and slaves, just as for us who are with our working life, that it、uh, occupies most of、uh, our lives. He used five chapter verse one to the beginning of the sentence. That he used verse twenty one seems to、uh, make a start for all the verses、uh, to follow. You. 又當全敬畏基督嘅心彼此順服。好 ，We have to submit to one another in the fear of Christ。如果你睇到喺每一個關係裏邊，都係神要我哋喺度喺度安排咗嘅。And if you see that in every relationship that we have, how God has a, a, a purpose. 位置上面，冇系做妻子、丈夫、儿女、父母、仆人、主人。如果你接受，睇到呢个系神嘅安排。无论你在什么位置，无论你是妻子、丈夫、儿女、父母、仆人、主人，如果你接受，睇到呢个系神嘅安排。无论你在什么位置，无论你是妻子、丈夫、儿女、父母、仆人、主人，如果你接受，睇到呢个系神嘅安排。无论你在什么位置，无论你是妻子、丈夫、儿女、父母、仆人、主人，如果你接受，睇到呢个系神嘅安排。无论你在什么位置，无论你是妻子、丈夫、儿女、父母、仆人、主人，如果你接受，睇到呢个系神嘅安排。无论你在什么位置，无论你是妻子、丈夫、儿女、父母、仆人、主人，如果你接受，This is the learning of being submitted to Christ. Don't you think you should not go to church, ah, ah, to meet or to serve, until you have the Holy Spirit? Don't think that there can only be spiritual learnings and lessons when you are in church and are serving. God today, 
叫我哋呢一班神嘅兒女喺凡事上，我哋都要學習讓主居首位。And it is for every one of us who believe in the Lord to know that in every situation we are to have Him as Lord. Whatever comes upon the children of God, there is God's will and His arrangement. Dear children, we all have to be here, here in this very important task. It is to have a God's heart and a God's heart. Hear how important it is to have that heart of reverence and fear for Christ, then to learn to submit to one another. Then we will learn to submit to one another. Then we will learn to submit to one another. Then we will learn to submit to one another. Then we will learn to submit to one another. Then we will learn to submit to one another. Then we will learn to submit to one another. Then we will learn to submit to one another. Then we will learn to submit to one another. Then we will learn to submit to one another. Then we will learn to submit to one another. Uh, in the, these are three relationships that's been brought up. It's the wives, the children, and the bondmen being mentioned first. Why is it that uh, in these three relationships, this is the way it's being put forth? Because whether man or woman, young or old, we have this problem of not submitting to authority. If we don't submit to God's authority, it is unbelief. If you do not submit yourself to the authority of God, you will not be those who be obedient to Him. 我我有時聽嗰啲背逆嘅新聞仔啊，對父母講啲最背逆嘅説話係乜嘢咧？那我聽到一些啊，背逆嘅新聞。Very rebellious children, what they say to their parents, those rebellious words, what are they? I never asked to be born. 你說我從來冇叫佢生我。I never asked to be born. 弟兄姊妹，呢個就係人。This is the rebelliousness, the DNA of Adam that we have. So today, we are in God's presence. Every person should learn the lesson of being obedient to Jesus' heart and submission. And this is the lesson for each and every one of us: how to submit to one another in the fear of Christ. Yeah, it talks about having the fear, as if the fear of God. 弟兄姊妹，你唔係怕神懲罰你。Not being afraid that God will punish you. That is very, very low. 我哋係怕神唔滿意，我哋係怕神對我哋失望。我們是怕。We are afraid that how God will be displeased and how He will be disappointed. 我哋真係睇見佢對我哋個愛。佢哋個救恩嘅時候，我哋唔係怕神懲罰我哋，我哋係怕神唔開心、唔滿意對我哋失望。And、uh, when we see of God's love that He has for us in our salvation, we, our fear is not that we will be punished, but for the fact that、uh, He may be displeased, disappointed with us. 如果你真係睇到呢一點嘅時候，我哋就好容易接受神為我哋安排嘅地位。And if we're able to see this, then it's easy for us to accept how a God has purpose for our, for us, for us to to learn in our place in our position.
I'm afraid that in society, just as we have also in the church, that we are not a, we are not those who are learning this lesson of submission in the fear of Christ. Are we able to see that in those very successful, prosperous churches like the mega churches, are we able to see what the brothers and sisters there are like? They rather uh, hear stories than uh, to have uh, doctrines being taught. They rather go uh, to the church to be entertained rather than have uh, the, to, to subject themselves to the lessons of the cross. And it is that they are there uh, to satisfy man's uh, feelings rather than uh, the heart of God. That's a spiritual base. They may talk about relationships between husband and wives and our interrelationship with one another, but none of this can really solve any problems. The real relationship is that we come before God with Christ as a head and we are submitted to it. That we see how clearly we are beloved children. That uh, we are not those who having here all that is being uh, taught, uh, that we are not able to uh, walk on it, that we have a big head and very little feet. And for uh, wives, uh, children, uh, uh, servants, husbands, uh, parents, and masters, how in all this we are to learn submission. For wives to submit to husband, just as for the church to submit to Christ. And on the other hand, we have the husbands to love the wives, just as for Christ to have loved the church and gave himself for her. It seems uh, for the wife to submit to her husband having to deny herself. And for husbands to love the wife, and this is even clearer being compared to Christ loving the church and gave himself for her. We find wherever our place is, whatever position God has put us, we know that uh, there is this lesson of uh, denying ourselves. For the Lord Himself to be in His rightful place as He. And parents and children's uh, relationship the same. We know for every brother and sister who loves the Lord would honor their parents. Uh, 
And a lot of the contradiction that perhaps may come about in the family is a question of whether we have submitted to the law. As parents, sometimes we are so particular about uh, keeping uh, uh, the rights. And as children, they are not there uh, seeking to please the parents. But are we living in the love of the Lord, able to see very clearly what God has arranged, what God has put us in? Are we ready to put aside our selves and our rights? Are we ready to serve uh, as serving the Lord and not a man, and to please the Lord and not man? And masters, uh, do you uh, not uh, know that uh, for uh, the servant and master, they have both the same masters, uh, master in the heaven? And as bondmen, how with fear and trembling and simplicity, uh, having the heart uh, to serve as heart uh, to uh, Christ, uh, to uh, serve uh, the uh, earthly master, and they know for themselves that, that they have another master in the heaven, and this caused them to have the fear and reverence. Uh, and in the various positions that God puts us in, in our every uh, type of relationship, if we can actually see uh, Christ uh, to be uh, the head and uh, have Him as the Lord. If we are uh, ready to accept such uh, lessons and see that this is what God has arranged, and uh, when we are ready to do this, to let the Lord uh, have His place, whether uh, in our lives, uh, in the families, and in the church, for uh, the Lord to be lifted up as head. And then, for us, that we who have first pre-trusted in Christ, how God's uh, glory will indeed be seen and praised. And this is uh, the most important aspect in chapter 1, verse 10, uh, and, and verse 12, what I've shared. And 
when a church uh, can uh, be uh, 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 filled uh, with uh, uh, God and can be uh, seen, when we uh, all have this, uh, have learned the lessons of submitting to the authority of uh, the Lord, to exalt uh, Christ and for Him to be glorified, whether uh, in, uh, personally our lives, in our, our work, in our service, to actually manifest uh, this a very a lesson of our submission, then the life of Christ will flow out through us. We can then be the very workmanship of God where His glory will be manifested. And God's will will be accomplished and the enemy will be put to shame. These are fundamental lessons of our lives. However, they are very important uh, fundamental uh, uh, learnings uh, that is meant to link up with the will of God. And we are not able to share in detail, uh, but I hope that uh, what we have uh, shared uh, today, that you will go back and reread uh, these, and that these will be indeed our, our help and also our strengthening and clear. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your words instruct us to put off the old man and put on the new man. Only then will we be those who are able to walk worthy of our calling. Lord, give to us that heart of fear uh, to learn this lesson of submission. Then we can be indeed your uh, uh, bride uh, and uh, your helpmate. And through us, that the uh, uh, principalities and authorities are able to see the manful wisdom of yours. And uh, to uh, uh, indeed uh, help us uh, to live out a life uh, worthy of our calling. May our words be a reminder for us and be a light unto our path, a lamp unto our feet. We commit all the glory to you. Bless your word, bless the church, and bless your testimony. Pray and give thanks in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.